speaking. This is the Central Business Architecture Committee. Um, we are meeting today to review revisions to the guidelines um, for the entire document. We've gone through every section and I think we're just going to be um, reviewing those, those edits and confirming them. Um, but before we get started, to open it up to the public for any public comment. <laughs> you guys love having public comment? Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, my name is Tess Carampo. I own property at 32 Masonic Street, units 4 and 8, um, which is where I also live. And um, I'm just sort of a brief recommendation or comment. You may have noticed the major window replacement going on at that building um, that started on May 16th. Um, it's as uh, a condominium, you know, the owners in that building were anticipating that that project would come before this board and a determination was made that that wasn't necessary. Um, and I'm just here to say I really respect what you guys do and your function and I'm wondering if in the future if this board would be required to concur when the building inspector makes that determination that a project is exempt or, um, you know, provide some kind of, yeah, just concurrence and acknowledgement that um, that a project like that doesn't need to come before this board. What's on the ground floor of your? Uh, there are three commercial units on the ground floor of the main building, and then the parlor room is a separate condominium unit that's part the, of the association. It was walking on his whole building there, the old skin glass building. Right. I mean, he always, yeah. Well, you never well, own the whole thing, but yes. Yeah, well, it's always been a condo. No, so. I, <laughs> um, I built so the front door in that building. You did? <laughs> that oval oak door. Nice. <laughs> we could use one on the back, so maybe <laughs> we'll do. Um, but yeah, so there are three different commercial condominium units on the ground floor, plus the parlor room unit, and then eight residential uh, And so this new window's on one of the upper floors? These are oh. on 114 windows all on the, the entire... Units. All the commercial and residential, excluding the parlor room. So the entire brick building, uh, three-story brick building. So the basement level, which is half windows, first floor. So they're replacing floor, all the windows in the whole thing. Yes. Were you in favor of the of, of that um, project? Of the project, um, yes. Uh, we voted in favor of it so long as it complied with all municipal code. Um, and I will say that all of the owners who participated in the past meetings were under the impression that it would have to come before this board. Um, so the, so the, did the actual openings of the windows change or just the um, like no. windows that fit into them? Yeah, they're just insert windows. Pardon me? Just insert windows. It's just replacements. So those yeah. were all, those were historic tax credit. That building had historic tax credits when it was, when that, when that was done. So that yeah, is, it's, and generally the people who grant the historic tax credits frown very deeply on replacing windows, or they, they, they're very concerned with what kind of windows right. get replaced. And, you know, to be honest, I mean, I, you know, the, the project, um, you know, it, it started, you know, we didn't have notice that it was starting, we got notification the day of, so, you know, I'm not here to kind of complain or rehash about our building. Um, I'm not, you know, happy or excited about the replacement window that was chosen, but, you know, I'm more kind of just thinking longer term or bigger picture about how this board can at least concur when there are those determinations that are made. Um, because, uh, you know, the 114 is a lot of windows, you know, and it's, you know, it's, it's a project that's been under discussion for about 11 years. So, you know, there there's a lot of opportunity to kind of think really carefully and, and it's, you know, it's, it just has a big impact on, on how the building reads, so. Do the, are the windows that are being put in, do they um, match in style the windows that are being removed? They are six over six. Um, the replacements are the, the simulated divided light um, aluminum clad. So are they simulated or are they grills between the glass? Oh, they may be grills between the glass. Yes, which I was surprised that why that happened. Because the, the, the owner came to me at one point, I'm a right. builder. Yeah, and, no, I think you know, you've talked I, about I, this I was, before, yeah. It, it's been through many builders and budgeting yes. and for all the years, but 
you know, I was always in the, under the impression that it, it should have been SDL simulated to buy the mm -hmm. not girls between the glass, mm -hmm. which I think was selected, if I'm it's correct. That, so that's like, um, yeah, it's like, it's a, and then there's like it's a, a between the two panes yes. of glass. So yeah. there's, no, there's, there's no, no projection on the outside of the glass. Yeah. Which I was no. surprised. At that um, there's not, and you know, and I don't have again, you know, because I came to kind of just talk proactively. I didn't bring photos or anything like that. But um, but yeah, I mean, you know, we we bought property here kind of because there were these kinds of protections in place that don't exist in other towns and cities, and then we chose to live downtown and, you know, and do that. And so it just, it, it seems like you guys have a lot of value to add, and I know that the building inspector has latitude and a lot of experience, but it's, it's nice to leverage the experience you guys have to kind of review those sorts of determinations when they're a project of this size. Well, we've certainly reviewed that type of situation in the past. It's usually as part of a larger project as opposed to simply a window replacement. Mm -hmm. And I think you do get window replacements um, yeah. if they're a change. So if they're a change in what they look like. Right. But if, the, if it was presented as something that would be mm -hmm. similar to what is there. But I would say that was similar is there's a lot That's of latitude exactly. in that, yeah. that description. Um, Are you working with an architect on this? No. no yeah. Um, we have we have seven uh, seven owners who comprise the association. Um, one of whom is um, sort of absent, but um, we also have a majority owner situation. So that's um, so no, it's been a, just an independent window person um, who is doing all the install. And, because I was going to say, most of the local architects sort of know what the guidelines are and what to, what this board approves. Um, you know, cats out of the bag on this. <laughs> so, so this is something that that Louis could have sent to us. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, frankly, I haven't been able to, I haven't caught up to Louie on this particular one. This went through, as was mentioned before, several iterations over a couple of years, and there are several presentations that were denied by the building department because they were a change. Um, and I, I looked at them with the building commissioner. Um, I was surprised, I didn't even know they were moving forward with the window, so it could be that I either it happened several months ago and I totally f forgot about the review or I was out of town and so they went ahead and evaluated and said, oh, what they're presenting is really like for like so they can go ahead. Um, so I don't have a concrete answer about that. I didn't know yeah. for sure. I didn't know if you were gonna be here tonight. The, there's an item on the agenda to talk about whether you wanna shift the, do, the um, you know, uh, party that's um, granting the exemption um, for the permits and the permits of non-applicability. So we can talk about that now or later in the agenda, but um, it was generated by the request from TESS about whether or not this is, um, if you all or you should designate an individual or subcommittee to do the review of the, any of the projects to make the determination because in the ordinance and I have it I brought copies of it here so you guys can look at it so you know if you want to discuss it now we can launch into it but I guess I was leading into that just because I wasn't sure exactly how this one finally was determined um, typically I think Louie does a good job of evaluating whether things look differently. Um, and so I don't know if it was the way it was presented or if um, someone else did the final review and issued the building permit. I, I just don't know. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So thank you for coming <laughs> in. And, um, Thanks for putting on the agenda. I didn't know if that, that, that was going to happen. I only live across the street, so it was an easy walk. So. <laughs>
Have a good rest of your meeting. Thank, Thank you. you. I won't stick around for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess it probably makes sense to maybe uh, continue this discussion right now. If we're going to talk about it and look at what Carolyn has. So this is what, this is the, um, that's funny, I made, I accidentally printed this twice, so we have plenty of copies. <laughs> so there's two more. pages, right? It's front and, uh, yeah, front and back. Is that enough? Okay. Yeah, that all happened, you know, Robin Friedenfeld, who's one of the principals, you know, she came to us, and she's David Claxton from Pioneers, to yeah. but I really didn't think we go between the class for a while. We don't, if the existing is the, um, oh, that's not a surprise for her, to, for you to say that, or her to say it, or whoever said it. I, no, I mean if there's a, if there's um, unless it's existing. So no, if, I mean, if they it's were, existing, they were it's between six over then sixes, you would let. You know, if it's not, then category all the time. Louis says no. no. Simulated divided line. Right, simulated divide. So I can't recall what was presented. Again, it may, I may have looked at it and it presented differently. I don't remember that. But again, so we looked at so many different ones over the last year mm -hmm. that were rejected. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised to see that they were starting construction. So Yeah, I assumed, you know, Robin came to us, I knew David, David, I run into David in the business, yeah. you know, he mentions he's doing this. I just assumed it was coming before the board and then all of a sudden they're putting in all these sets, you know, so they really, they're not doing um, the simulated, they're not simulated. I don't think so, I'll go look, uh, but okay. I'm sure it was girls between the glass. Is that what, because she said a lot of picture. problems with the owners was, I mean, yeah. the, the cost differential was huge, you know, and they didn't really want to spend the money on the SDLs, you know. You know, yeah. window, that's like the whole window replacement almost, you know. But, yeah. Um, anyway, it would yeah. be interesting if you would talk to Louie and find out how, what happened to the process there. Yeah. Yeah. I'd just be curious. You know. Yeah. Well, it's I don't know how long ago, Joe, you mentioned something about the tax credits. If if they run their that's a time limited period, right? That you're in that um, window. So would you think they've gone is beyond it, that? I mean, that it is probably more than twenty five years ago that that probably oh, yeah. happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They they burned up the tax okay. credits. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because that's sort of a one shot deal. Yeah. Um, but they but they're not by accepting the tax credit. They're not. They're only obligated to um, keep that renovation for 25 years. I don't know if there's a time limit on that, um, but I think that once the construction is done, then if there are any changes, then it becomes a new project for review. And obviously, they're not going back in for a second round of tax credits, right. so they don't need the review. But, you know, in our guidelines, I was just going back to check this. You know, there's not any mention of grills between the glass specifically in the guidelines. It just says, you know, such elements include rectangular or arch window frame units, divided light sash. That's this is just a description, mm -hmm. and it says windows for new buildings should be of size and design, uh, compatible with nearby buildings using clear, not mirrored glass. And then there should be some traditionally appropriate horizontal division within the frame, but not snap in grills. But it doesn't mention grills between the Yeah, and I don't think they're much of an improvement. You know, I mean, when you look at a window from the exterior, whether it has a snap in or or the between the grass, <laughs> it looks the same. You see a shiny piece of glass with something behind it. Mm -hmm. and maybe we should call it a simulated this, but Maybe we should edit this better before we finalize. If anyone has that, do we, do, we, do we add that by any chance? Yes. On guideline 9. Windows or guideline 9? Do you know what page it is? Do you have that in front of you? Well, in the old book, it's 29. And that's all windows. I can just do it. I know there's another section in windows, but that's, you know, I think that's really it. Um, You know, I feel pretty strong that you know, mm -hmm. SDLs are mm -hmm. very important yeah. character, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if you just add the phrase, no snapping grills, no muffin sandwiches, or whatever the 
stay in the area. It's still in the class. Just say no. It's not in the guide box. Kind of, I feel like that was kind of shuffled through somehow in the building department. I don't know. Maybe it was winding to Louie to the point where he couldn't stand it anymore. No, she's, it she's worried about the building inspector, though. Now, now she's that's why she came here, wondering if like if the building inspectors were having a hard time. I don't think if they issued the, the building permit, and as long as they're building it based on what they issued the permit on, there should be an issue. Regardless if we change something right now. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. that'll be up to the fact, but yeah. okay. I mean, Louie already made his decision, but I don't think we can. Right. Oh, no way you're going to take back 100 <laughs> windows. <laughs> no, but I, I know the, the lawyer's office on Pleasant Street, um, those windows, that they they had purchased the windows oh, I with told before, there. <laughs> before coming to us right. and we said yeah. no you can't I'm sorry right. you can't put those windows in they don't they're not similar to what was there and they don't but we succumbed she put that in the front of that building she re, they redesigned that one picture window in the front oh yeah she, they, what's her name uh, you talking about like a Pleasant Theater? No, the, the what was the old next Eagles the Lodge yard. next to the lumber yard? Uh, oh, the, oh, yeah. Uh, um, the Eagles, was it the Eagles Lodge or something like that at one point? Maybe. Yeah, potato chip factory. Remember the kids with she? They had already bought oh, yeah. this big picture yeah, yeah. window and they were whining about, well, oh, we've already bought it. Blah, blah, blah. And we I don't like remember, it. there we was like an it. issue about the side windows too, but I don't recall. They had bought all the windows. It was the whole package? Yeah. yeah. So you did already address that in the last third to last fall if it's up I can make it bigger. Okay. No snapping not snapping grills or grills between the glass. Oh we did already we put in our just <laughs> put there. simulated divided lights are acceptable. Oh I said yeah. So that's what your and it's changes. Yeah. Well we were good we were conscious <laughs> enough to realize it. It's just so it'd be interesting. I'd be just curious to see what how that process came Yeah, about. I'll yeah. look I mean mm -hmm. Louis on vacation this week. Um so and, and it came up maybe a week and a half ago or something. And um, so I just hadn't had a ch and In fact, Tess was going to go down and look at the file herself. Mm -hmm. And I guess she just has, hasn't had a chance to do that. Is Lewis, is he, he's retiring soon, I heard. Chuck is. No, I know Chuck is. Yeah, yeah. next two weeks. But yeah. I heard I was in another building department. And uh, they mentioned Wow, you're both you're losing Chuck and Louie. I didn't heard about Louie. Like, I don't think Louie. I think I think, I think I asked him that directly. I think that's a rumor. Okay. No. Um, anyway, let's get yeah, let's go right. back to um, I guess the question about whether uh, someone from this committee or a few people from this committee should be part of determining whether uh, an applicant needs to come before the committee. And my only concern is timing um, and how that might impact the process. Well, so you can kind of, so in a 156.5a, it says the Central Business Architecture Committee shall appoint a subcommittee or agent and authorize that secondary agent to issue a certificate of applicability under this section. Such certification is not required, but is provided to provide an applicant document permit is not, the permit is not required. So, um, so, you know, it says within 14, it's already sort of set up for that non-applicability review. I think it's just a matter of who would do it. So if you want to authorize one, <laughs> yeah. authorize an agent or one of the, I mean, you know, so this could, I could see it as something comparable to a, um, re, you know, a permit condition review where sometimes you say this has to be done um, and staff plus a member of the committee has to do final sign off or something like that. And it could have then be a matter of you know, a few days exchange between one of, you know, you and me, or it could just be you. We could send it to you and say, okay, what do you think? 
and then we can then any kind of that's an administrative review so if anybody wanted to appeal that it would go to the planning board or it could go to the full committee as mm -hmm. a permit decision so actually it would go to the full committee i think it probably says that yeah but when a building permit goes in though it's reviewed initially for this committee it's exempt yeah. yeah and isn't that just by process determining the non-applicability yes. of this right yeah. So, so what there what, we would do that, or the commissioner would do that. So why do we have to have a person appointed for that? Well, because you've if, authorized if us, the building if, if commissioner. If we had a subcommittee and one of us was on it, we would have seen that those windows with, and they well, would have said, "I think this should come before our committee." Whereas Louis let it slide by. Whoever approved it probably looked at the drawing and said, "Oh yeah, there are markings in there. Looks the same, the drawing." Right, the other piece of it is obviously you have a singular focus and the building department and I as well, even though I try to, you know, yeah. are looking at all the other aspects of an application. So if it gets flagged for just this one element and then the building department continues to look at all the other building code issues, it also, it, it might not slip through as easily. Because every permit wouldn't go before you. Because, oh, you only review, you only see Permits that have a zoning. Right. Um, I don't look at all the buildings. See yeah. Right. I mean, replacements, you wouldn't even see that. I do see those, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I look at those, because those come in under zoning, too. So they throw anything. Basically, you have to file a zoning permit if you're doing anything um, to the exterior. Um, to see if okay, it's yeah. code, if it complies with the zoning. So that gets sort of thrown into a pile that I review yeah. with, with the building commission. Um, so I guess one question would be, would that mean that every single building permit that comes in, in the central business district would come to either an individual or a subcommittee of this committee? Or would it only be if the building commissioner is unsure or thinks yeah. that it doesn't need to come before the committee that we would whoever that um, subcommittee is would review it yeah so you could have like a concurrence or something where if if the building commissioner determines if, that it's exempt then the final check final would check. be from we should somebody. still review that yeah we have to approve his exemption I guess that, I, I think that would make more sense because there's going to be applications that are obviously going to have to come before us. There's no question. Yeah. And they can just check that off and send it through and it's not a double review. Yeah. But if there's a question about it, whether it should be reviewed or if the building commissioner has determined that it doesn't need to be reviewed, then maybe it's a double check with, with one of us and you. I would say that you should be involved in that process. Yeah, it seems to me you've got three scenarios here. One, an application comes in, it looks like it's perfect, meets the guidelines, the building inspector said, fine, no problem, go ahead and right. do it. The next thing is, if it seems to meet most of the guidelines, but there's some question, then it might be expedited to have an individual or an agent look at it if it looks like it doesn't meet the guidelines at all, then it comes before the whole board, or if it's a complex project. But I think in a, a service to the community to expedite some of these things, you don't want to have to go through the rigmarole of setting up a meeting, doing the advertising and everything like that, just if there's a question as to whether or not it's a it the show show or not. Mm -hmm. There might be little things like that that could be handled not simply by staff, but also staff with one of us looking over right. their shoulder. But it should be either, we should review any exemptions to make sure they are truly exempt, as well as anything that's questionable. Mm -hmm. Well, but then and the then question we, is, does that come before this board, or does it come before an agent of the board? I think an agent of the board. Okay. Just to, like you're the saying, to simplify it, right. so you yeah. don't have to do all the advertising right. and pay the fees and everything. Because if that agent, if our agent determined that it was not exempt, let's say the building inspector made it exempt and we reviewed it and claimed mm -hmm. it wasn't exempt, then we mm -hmm. insist that it comes behind before, yeah. and then it just comes to our full right. committee. Yeah. 
but are we setting a policy here? What, Carolyn, I, I don't quite understand yeah, what, I, what I this think is about. We're determining this whether we're gonna designate a person or a number of people from this committee to be that agent. Yeah, so this is a change from the way it's been done for a number of years. It's not a, it's not a precedent um, in that we have a similar review process for the Elm Street Historic District review. So there is a staff level review um, in our office as opposed to the building department that determines whether things are exempt or not applicable, you know, issuing a, non a certificate of non-applicability. So we've done that before. So I wouldn't worry about setting up, I mean, it's a change, it would be a change from how we do it now because it clearly says the following elements are exempt from review by the committee. The building commissioner shall issue a permit if um, he or she determines that the project is exempt. So that's under C. So you'd have to change that to say, you know, something like if you were thinking about it in the terms the way you're discussing is, you know, the following elements may be exempt um, uh, with final determination made by, it could be a committee member and a staff person from OPS or something like that, um, however you want to phrase it, if, you, if that was, um, or that um, building commissioner shall review and um, the committee shall confirm the exempt, these the following projects as meeting, as being exempt. Um, and actually some of these, now that I'm looking at this, I think some of these are pretty straightforward, so we might have to create a different category, because landscaping and I mean, that doesn't need to be signed off by you guys. Right. But I think this is where the, the replacement of windows comes in. Oh, so number 12, the Intent reconstruction. Number 10? Uh, I think that's supposed to be storm doors and storm windows, as opposed to, you could say, well, windows are exempt. Oh, right. Storm doors and storm. Yeah, okay. But I could see somebody reading that and saying, oh, windows are exempt. Right, yeah. Well, the other piece, you know, in here, now that we're looking at this, <laughs> rooftop solar panels. So do you remember there was the proposal? Yeah. So, flush rooftop solar panels maybe, but uh, anything that's visible from the street has to be reviewed. Well, when, or it's when, not really that's important. still part of 10. Um, I'm looking at 10 where it says oh. rooftop solar panels. Because you guys oh, yeah. have had this discussion already about the ones that are projecting above the roof is different than if they're just, you know, like or flat or they're behind a parapet where you can't see them from, from the right. ground. Right. So this language might need to be tweaked anyway in number 10. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we could just say rooftop solar panels not visible from the street. Right. And how do you get into green roofs and things like that? <laughs> like if you're gonna have a tree, it puts on, on top of somebody's roof. I mean, well that's well, we landscaping with plants, trees, or shrubs. Sure <laughs> <laughs> number uh, four. Okay. Um, no, but that's exempt. You're, you're right. saying shouldn't a green right. roof okay. be reviewed. So that, that was like double reading. <laughs> you know, back to number 10 there, it has window air conditioners. Weren't you mentioning in our last meeting there's something restrictive about having air conditioners on Main Street? No, there's not. I think that's the issue. Is that yeah, the issue? Yeah, I don't think there are. I mean, we can look in here and see if like there should be because they don't care about people's heads <laughs> or fall on people's heads. Okay, so guideline 13, mechanical equipment. For historic buildings, window-mounted air conditioners or other features should not be installed in ways 
which irreversibly damage the historic features or materials. Mounting hardware should be attached to mortar joints. Um, yeah, so window mounted. Where feasible, window mounted air conditioners should not be located on facades which front major streets. But that's where feasible. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, that's a very uh, weak. I mean, if you wanted to prevent that, it's not very strong language. Yeah, I think that would be. But it's also a contradiction to this other point. It says right. it's allowed. Right. Well, yeah, and how do you enforce that? Because if you rent out an apartment to somebody, right. they're going to stick on an air conditioner. Well, or if they've been in there for, you know, 15 years renting the same apartment, you yeah. know, and it, all of a sudden they can't do it or, you know, whatever. That's a hard thing. It's yeah. Pretty much of a reversible. Change though, as it long is. as they don't yeah, damage right. the building fabric. Right. right. If you can fix it with a paintbrush or a screwdriver, don't worry about it. Right. So, um, so I guess there's that ten, number ten, um, and then um, number twelve. Uh, that's by so number 12 basically says that if due to a fire or damage that if it's again substantially similar is kind of a could be vague but well but you it's might saying want basically if you're going to repair the building that as long as it meets you know it's exempt from going through this arc right but as that, long as that yeah is that something you'd want to confirm though with if, some, if, so. if you had a, if you had a, <clears throat> um, I just forgot the name, like a non-conforming building burned down, wouldn't you want to be able to review what they were going to replace it with, no matter what? And because you wouldn't want, um, you, know, you wouldn't want another transitional something in there. If you're starting from scratch, right? If you set, like a doorway that's not wide enough to be ADA compliant that was grandfathered in, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so well, if it was a new building, I mean, if a building completely burned down or for whatever reason was destroyed, it would have to and it, it was a new building of a new design, it would have to come through our committee. Right. I think this implies reconstruction substantially similar, which means you're just replacing the same looking structure. Uh -huh. that it's exempt. But even within that generalization, there could be things happening like putting in windows that are grills between the glass or whatever if it wasn't called out specifically on the plans. Well, so it's interesting. So there is language in number 17 and 18 where it says, and 16, where it says replacement windows, but an appearance but a change in materials in the building commissioner or the committee mm -hmm. finds that the new windows are identical in size so you identical is pretty um specific yeah right i'd be okay with that so like but this is already it's saying or the committee so you know it could be the and the committee or uh, and the committee's designated Right, and the same language is in 18, restoration of features of the same design as existed historically when the commissioner or the committee finds. So you could just add the and there and potentially add that to the other um, bullets that, mm -hmm. you know, number 12, um, to say that it's the building commissioner and the committee where it's designated. Well, number 17, the last sentence, did you say that snapping grills are not exempt? No, I think what that implies is that snapping grills are exempt. Like, I think what it means is like, let's say you window, let, let's say you had a building with just a one over one, one over one light, and you replaced it with a one over one light. But if you wanted to put snapping grills in it, they are exempt because it doesn't affect permanence of the look. You know, you can always take them out again from the inside, okay. right? I mean, I think that's what that's implying. But that, and these are for replacement um, 
window, so it wouldn't be new construction. So the guidelines talk about new construction, and they, they, and it says snap and grills are not appropriate. So if you're doing it brand new, right? But what she was talking about tonight. So what, what would we have had a problem prior to that? If if she was doing snap snap and grills. Well, um, that because it's replacement. Well, the snapping grills would not meet. It would not meet the identical. Um, right. It's only if you had a snap-in grill. Right. So that's why I'm right. saying this is that was a replacement, and this said this is saying snapping grills are exempt. First sentence reads with the replacement that are similar, and it might have been similar to what it was in in, in the design and appearance. Mm -hmm. But the last sentence says it's no, snapping grills are exempt. I don't know, I'm just being... It's, yes, well, it no, seems it's, like it's, a contradiction. Yeah. It's not well written. It, I think it should be rewritten more specifically. Because even the guidelines brings up that point about the horizontal division. Yeah. Can't be... Right? What is a it snapping say? grill. Yeah. I think that means like somebody's putting in a fixed window and they want to make it look like it's a double hung window. But yeah. it's just one yeah. piece of glass. And if somebody put a snap-in grill on the inside, that's, that's right. not, but doesn't meet the guy. But if they put an SDL division on it, like right. a lot of times we put in like casements that look like right. double hunks. Yeah. Right. That would be allowed. Right. As long as you had something on the inside, something on the outside, <laughs> something. But what this doesn't side. specify is that if the existing window was, let's say, a six over six true divided light, you can't. I think it has to be addressed if that you can't use a six over six snap it grill mm -hmm. or grills between the glass. Right. I think that this needs to be rewritten. I think yeah, you know, we should. Be but this, but it also said replace it. So if you had a true divided light and you're replacing it with a window that had snap in grills, that's not. No, that would That's not it. the same general design and appearance of well, the true divided yeah, light. But I mean, that would be my interpretation. Right. Yeah, but the first sentence says, you know, because like an old six over six or four over four, whatever, is a wood, let's say it's a wood divided light. Right. And what this is implying is you're going to replace it with an identical window with a new material because the new material would be an aluminum clad mutton. Right. As long as it's an SDL, not a stampin. Or, or, or grill between the glass. Yeah, I don't know. That, I feel like that the bracket at the end of 17 should, should be taken out. Yeah. yeah. Because it's in conflict with the guidelines. <laughs> and you're never going to have it be a re identical replacement to a true divided line. Right. Just scratch that line and then that is a really 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 long sentence honestly <laughs> yeah I don't like it yeah. <laughs> placement of a window with a new window and have the same general design and plans, but a change of materials when the building commissioner and the committee or it says you find the new window I still think it's grammatically correct. It's <laughs> grammatically correct. <laughs> well, I think we did break it. I think it was here. to uh, eliminate that run on effort. I think we could simplify it to a few sentences that would be more right. specific. Well, you could just put a period after same size the old windows. Um, replacement shall not alter sills, lentils, or tops. And may not incorporate mirror glass. Period. Period. Right. <laughs> and then ex the exceptions are small decorative windows and first floor storefront windows. Period. So, yeah. Windows to have traditionally appropriate horizontal divisions with the within the glass. You see, that's what you see. And and Sorry. simulated divided lights are provided to match the original configuration of divided lights or something to that effect. Small decorative windows and first floor storefront windows 
may have traditionally appropriate horizontal division within the glass. And then what's the... Uh, that no, 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 I think it's but just But that saying, last phrase is weird, just tacked on there. Windows have a traditionally appropriate... I don't even think that's a, a full, like, sentence phrase. It, there's no verb in there. You know what I mean? It's because before that it says oh, right. when, when, except for small decorative windows and first floor storefronts. So now, windows, windows should have that have a, a traditionally appropriate. Is that part of the when? <laughs> no. You know what I mean? I, I don't, should have a traditionally appropriate his or horizontal division within glass. But storefronts shouldn't have a, a horizontal division. No, oh, you're right. Glass. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think what that that should be a separate sentence that, that says small decorative windows and first floor storefronts are exempt. Are exempt. Period. Period. Right. Are exempt from what? The guidelines. With uh, with well, respect to divisions within the, the, the right. But the first part the first exemption is about replacing windows. So, if you want to replace a small decorative window, don't you want it to be the same? Yes, you want it to be the same. So, what so. is that saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a weird sentence. It's too general. Okay. Okay, the building committee finds that the new windows are identical in size as the old windows. And when, except for small windows. That, that, that doesn't yeah, make sense. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even going to get to the design guidelines. I know. <laughs> so, but you know what? Maybe you don't even need to do that because it's really, the whole thing is about replacing windows, whether it's decorative, small decorative, or first floor storefronts, or any other window in the building. It should be the same as what's there. So is there really a need to put this well, I think clause about small storefront windows or small decorative windows and storefront? You could yeah, you could take it out. I think I think what's confusing is that little phrase comes right before windows have a traditionally appropriate horizontal division within the glass. That doesn't really that doesn't apply to the small decorative windows or first storefronts. So I think you could strike that because what what we are trying to say is that what you're replacing the window with is something that is significantly similar or substantially similar to what it was originally there. And that's what gets you to be exact if you're doing that. If it is substantially similar. Right. And, and then that the, de the definition of what is substantially similar is what needs to be reviewed by both the building commissioner and I think staff and one at least one member of this committee. Okay, so how about this? So can I start over? Yeah. Just read the whole thing. <laughs> Replacement of a window with a new window of the same general design and appearance, but a change in materials when the building commissioner and the committee or its designee finds that the new windows are identical in size to the old windows. Replacements may not alter sills lintels or tops, and may not incorporate mirror glass, period, done. Good. Good. Quit on your head. Less is you more. You shouldn't even mention first law storefronts because they're exempt. exempt. Right. They're exempt, you know. When you're keeping 50%. And there's, is there somewhere else in all these, is there something about first law storefronts? 15. <laughs> is it there? 15, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> right. so that's redundant. And so for 18 with the building commissioner and committee or its designee, you want that to be the same language? I think you need to carry that parallel language through. So um, are there any other um, I think the other things are pretty clear. Freestanding walls, roof colors, unpainted masonry, open terrace, handicap ramps. Oh, how about number three? 
Well, it doesn't, if it's, or if it doesn't involve any change of design or appearance. That's correct. Right, yeah. but so, so that comes in, so let's go back to the window example. I show you something, so it's not changing the appearance. Mm -hmm. Because when I stand 20 feet back and squint, <laughs> I can, it looks the same. Uh -huh. I'm just playing devil's advocate. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. could someone argue that the same could arise for something else that's being yeah, a holographic paint or something? You know, if you squint your eyes, where's Waldo? Right. That kind of thing? Like, or, you know, a, a new shutter or something that's slightly different. But, but this says does not involve any change of design or appearance. So that's okay. fine. I mean, it's basically a replication of what's there. Okay. Right? Okay. That should be exempt. Right. That doesn't need a review, I don't think. Okay. So then um, it looks like 12, 17, and 18 um, would add, so at the end of 12, um, add a sentence exempt when the building commissioner and the committee or its designee makes the determination after number 12. Did you, uh, did, uh, number 10, I'm sorry, just to go back, did you change that to storm windows? Yes, yeah, storm doors and storm windows, <coughs> and then rooftop solar panels not visible from the street. <coughs> I, I have a question on 11 also. Okay. It says roof colors, paint, and stain colors, and painting of unpainted masonry and all non masonry structures. Do you want to I mean, do, do we allow? <laughs> do I want to go with your... <laughs> what that says is that we're allowing. Painting of unpainted masonry. Oh yeah, that shouldn't be there. Right? Well, the new sandwich shop uh, is painted masonry. Wasn't it already? Oh. I don't know if it was painted already, but it looks like. But it we was. shouldn't allow painting of unpainted, unpainted masonry. masonry. Right. It's just bad paint and stain colors, roof paint and stain colors, and painting of unpainted masonry. All that. It should be. Well, it should be painting of, of painted. painted of, of painted masonry. Right. Painted masonry. That's really important. And then get the last mm -hmm. Yeah. I paint my. Uh, every time somebody tags my building, I have to paint over it. But it's already been painted. Yeah. We're just saying well, if there's. Some, some sections of. Uh, when they tag a new section, I paint. I don't, I don't do it on the street. So but it's been painted already. But in the alleyway and real. Yeah. You, you, you're painting over somebody else's. That's so, so, so there is an unpermitted thing. Right. <laughs> the taggers have to come before the committee. <laughs> it's art. Yeah. They're going to say they're exempt. <laughs> right. So, were you talking about 12? having that language in there yeah. as well? adding a, a sentence at the bottom that that's allowed when the building commissioner and the committee or its designee makes, uh, determines that. Mm -hmm. that, is, that be, I think so, because there's a lot in the, that phrase that, like you said, it could be a whole building, <laughs> mm -hmm. which you would think would automatically come before us. but. So what, what was the wording that you wanted to add? Just a second sentence, or at the end, we might, I need to break this up because it's another long sentence. When the building commissioner and committee or its designee determines. When the building commissioner and the committee. Or its designee. I can't hear you. Or its designee, just the same language that's for the rest of the, for 17 and 18 as well. So right now it just says automatically it's exempt if you're reconstructing uh, a feature damaged by fire. So instead of leaving it as an automatic, that it's only approved 
when the building commissioner and the committee oh, okay. makes that right. determination that it's substantially similar. How about 14? So that kind of goes with what Joe was talking about before about Is that saying an anomaly or transitional building? Oh, it's exempt. Oh, never mind. Yeah, so it's just an alteration, but n a renovation, but not any kind of expansion, because it's, it's still, anomaly. It has to meet it's still an anomaly. Design guidelines, so yeah. I guess that's fine. And even if somebody is using the design guidelines, we want to see their project. Well, I think these were particularly pulled out because it's an anomaly building. So, um, if you're just doing a renovation, well, if um, you're doing a renovation that includes changing the appearance of the front of the building, then it should come before us, shouldn't it? I don't know. I mean, that this was specifically exempted at you know years ago with the feeling I think that. Um, so this is 14 as part of the is currently part of the ordinance. Ordinance. Right, all of this is the current ordinance. Okay. Um, so it looks like it was amended on 12-3-2015. Um, right, that was for to make sure that you can't um, modify the, gla the glazing on an anomaly or transitional residential building. Um, meaning you can't close up a window if it's there. Um, but the idea behind exempting anomaly and transitional residential was that um, to allow a little more flexibility with those buildings that aren't the key defining characteristic buildings for downtown. So if you think that's something that should be reconsidered, um, then that's fine. I think that um, it's sort of you know, it's a balance between create, requiring people to come into the committee for even buildings that are not such, um, you know, prime examples that, that the ordinance is trying to have replicated or, you know, use the elements and features of. Um, so, what is, what is the, I feel like whenever we do have one of those buildings come before us, we don't have, there's not really guidelines that are applicable to those types of buildings. Um, yeah. And th that's perhaps why it's exempt here because we, we can't obviously tell somebody that they have to turn that type of building into a theme building. It's not no. gonna happen. So, um, so, you know, you've had several of those like the, bakery mm -hmm. the optical studio is probably more recent than the bakery but the bakery did do that addition and, and so for additions they still would need to come before you but let's say the bakery was just doing a facade change that would be exempt because it is it, right there's right. there's not a lot to draw from when you make those changes just for the building they might change out their windows but you can't really tell them what to do with their windows because that building type isn't in our guidelines. It's an anomaly, that's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I guess that makes sense. If it's an expansion, then it has to come before us. If they're tearing it down, it has to come before us. Can you explain to me or talk about the 15 a little bit? Keep reading that two different ways. So um, this is, so anytime if you have a first floor facade um, that you're altering for, um, and it's a theme commercial building, it provides flexibility to make those changes as long as you're maintaining at least 50% of the facade as, as glass. Um, and the idea behind that is to encourage 
reuse and reinvestment in the storefronts along Main Street and not and make sure that we're not creating impediments to people, you know, businesses coming in. So if you were to buy somebody were to buy the faces building and they couldn't close up that big window and make it into two windows there. Well now the that's an anomaly. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But, okay. but um, so the other example which is a Lon's firm did owed and that has like a modern mm -hmm. storefront which wasn't like that before. So that was exempt because they were creating even more open Class. you know, right. yeah, visibility into the storefront. But, but that was a theme commercial building that the four, first floor. And the, the idea behind that clause was that every time a new store comes in, that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. The storefront's going to be yeah. changed. And we want to encourage that kind of. Um, so I, I don't remember what happened, but the guidelines for facades, are, it's a minimum 50% of glass. Yeah. Right. So this is saying that if it has a significant or more than that, you can change it as long as it maintains at least yeah. 50%. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it's really just following the guidelines. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. right. Okay. Well, this is interesting. Number 16 says alteration of the first floor facade of any landmark building when the committee finds that such alteration, but that means it would have come before us. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know how. So you would issue a, a certificate of non-applicability or something? Mm -hmm. I don't even know how you can do that because the landmark building is it's kind of restricted. You're not going to yeah. allow changes, <laughs> right? Well, it's yeah. certainly if it's that historic, if it's a historic landmark. Right. Yeah. 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 You could try. <laughs> I mean, there might be need. I mean, like, you have to put an accessible entrance or something, right. and, you know, right. that has to be. We're going to have to deal with St. Mary's sometime, and maybe putting in some, you know, 50 foot window in the front of <laughs> St. Mary's. If the, we're all set with or, 17, right? We changed that one. Yeah. That one got the most changed. And you, 18, you're just going to change that language? Yes. And? Yep. Okay. Um, you know, I have another question. Just looking at the street sidewalk utility poles and public and utility infrastructure that is generally within the street right of way. Maybe we should strike generally. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be the designated person if that um, works for the committee and then okay so the process for this because this isn't the code I'll have to take this to council for approval so I'll draft this um, and submit it to council you know as, as soon as I can um, if you all if that's the way you want to go and um, I don't know if they'll refer, I think they will refer it out for public hearing. I don't know if they'll refer it to, for zoning ordinances they always refer it to planning board as well um, because that's by statute, the planning board has to hold a hearing. Um, so what I can do is notify you of the public hearing so if you guys want to come and um, say anything about it then you can do that. Would it be helpful for at least one of us to be here if they, they have questions about the process? Probably, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Side on for me. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, yeah, so for then so I'll um, I'll run it, you know, by the mayor and then we'll figure out if it's time to send it to council. They may not I don't, these seem pretty minor to me, um, so they might want to do it before the end of the summer, but typically they shy away from doing public hearings during the summer, so um, I'll just keep you posted about that. Okay. How, how do the rest of you feel about um, me or uh, me and someone else being sort of the check and balance? 
I think there should be somebody to be able to answer questions. Otherwise, it's either going to go to the staff or it's going to be, well, we don't know, let's table it or something like that, if it's controversial. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these things can simply be answered by an explanation or an example. Mm -hmm. And it helps to have the design sets coming into it. I mean, if you want a second person, I think yeah, I did also. Someone will probably you know, notice construction. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Does that sound? Do we need to make any kind of formal vote on that, or no? Um, no. I mean, you um, you can vote to move um, the changes forward um, to propose the the ordinance amendment. Okay, that would probably be good to have a. Do you mean that whole? Document? No, yeah, we're just talking about this. Just this. Just stop oh, okay. yeah. I, I think we're going to hold on that document for today. <laughs> well, but let, let's, let's just yeah. finish this up yeah. first. So right. can I get a motion to approve the changes as discussed on the... To um, propose the amendment. To propose the amendments to the City Council as discussed. Can we, can we just has to go say through it. exactly <laughs> what the changes that we agreed to are? Each. Yeah, how about if we get a second and then do a discussion? Second. <clears throat> um, so, do I'm going to run through my notes, what I have? Yes. Okay. So, for 156 um, dash 5, um, a modification to subsection C, um, starting with 10 to make a text change so that storm doors and add, add the word storm to windows, screens, window air conditioners, and rooftop solar panels not visible from the street. Um, and that text be added to 10 and the rest stays the same. Well, I'm, window air conditioners are always going to be visible from the, the street. You just want to have the not visible that from the street applied to the solar the panels. Roofs, yeah, solar okay. panels. Roof solar panels, which are not visible. Um, and then number 11, roof colors, paint, and stain colors, and painting of painted masonry instead of unpainted masonry. Number 12, add a sentence um, at the end. Um, reconstruction um, is exempt when the building commissioner and the committee or its designee determines um, the standard has been met. 17. I, I'm sorry. I missed. Reconstruction is exempt. When the building commissioner or the committee, and, uh, when the building commissioner and the committee or its designee determines such. Well, how's that? Why do you. How, what, how's that different than what's already there? Because it doesn't say who's determ who makes the determination of whether it's substantially oh. similar. Okay. I think what we're implying is some of these points are, it's not necessary at all for our committee to even think right. about it, but the points that would potentially involve the guidelines we want to review. Yes. All right, so now I understand, I'm sorry. And then number 17, replacement of the window with a new window of the same general design and appearance but a change in materials when the building commissioner and the committee or its designee finds that the new windows are identical in size to the old windows, period. Replacements may not alter sills, lintels, or tops and may not incorporate beer glass, period. Um, strike the rest of that. And then 18, uh, restoration features of the same general design and appearance as historically as existed historically on a structure when the building commissioner and committee or its designee and the rest stays the same and then number 20 street sidewalks utility poles and public and utility infrastructure that is within the street right-of-way striking the word general okay. all in favor Okay. Um, so, um, then, so in terms of the guidelines, so I did send you a PDF of what I have so far. What I didn't send was I started, part of this was you wanted um, links and references to actually all the buildings and um, in the, um, 
in the district. So we've started doing that, as I mentioned, some of you are here. We have four interns this summer, so I've already talked to two of them who are gonna start um, incorporating, getting photos as part of their, so it's 287 buildings I toted up with a new boundary. <laughs> um, They're gonna so document gonna every one. building? Yes. Wow. So we have the list, we already have the designation. It was just adding the photograph, so it's pretty tedious going in, grabbing a picture, putting it in the table, so it lines up with the address. Interns. <laughs> <laughs> and the um, and the other thing I noticed too when I started doing it, because at the time, a week ago when I or two weeks ago, I wasn't sure how many people we were going to have, or if I could even use them if they were already assigned tasks. Um, I realized that I have we have some. Um, uh, library, a photo library of, of most of the buildings, but the buildings have changed so much from, so we need to grab new <laughs> shots of them. So, um, you know, it may be a lot of, we may have to sort of create a new photo inventory anyway. So, that's happening. So the draft that you have, I did start to make some of the changes and incorporate, like I got the percentages of different types of buildings, updated those numbers a little bit. Um, so you have the latest version of, I started just in the, I've probably gotten through a few pages. The red lines are still there because I think you guys still need to look at that. Mm -hmm. But some of the things that were obvious that needed to be changed, I added in there. So you'll see that. But um, I'm still working. Yeah, so just like it's there, there's red yeah. lines and highlights. That the highlights were just when I was looking for air conditioner, so you won't see highlights oh, okay. there. But it's red lined, yeah. yeah. Well, I'd rather either do it online or print it out. And then yeah, get yeah. back together yeah. and review it, because that'll take a while. Yeah, and so we need to figure out July, too, because the Tuesday in July is July 4th. So um, I think we will have one permit for the next meeting, so we should probably see if we could do a meeting in July, not July 4th, but another week. So I don't know if you guys have the ability to figure that out now. Or I just want to do it the following Tuesday. Or Can we do it on the 11th? The 11th? Uh, I'm here at the 11th. I may or may not be, I'm not sure. Try to take vacation. Okay. Well, I, I could do the 11th or the 18th. What's um, your preference? Um, could be anyway. Either, either the 11th or the 18th work for me. Yeah. Me too. Let's make it so we're making okay. Do we need time? Is the 18th better for the application or is it already in process? It just, um, we, we would have time for the 11th, either one. Um, why don't we shoot for the 11th? Okay. And I'll send an email out. So maybe I'll just do that now. <laughs> so I don't forget. Um, Do you need the form? Because if I, if I can't make it, or I think. You know, it's weird. Um, Melissa got just taken off my email. I wonder if she got the notice for tonight. I don't know what happened. So. <coughs> And, oh, so I just had minutes. I don't know if anybody looked at that. I mean, otherwise, I don't have to. Um, I, I did look at them. They're very short. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, get a second. second. All in favor? Aye. They were short. So we're going to, uh, so we do have an applicant for the next meeting. Yes. So we may or may not be able to review um, the reviews that you've done. You might be able to. Um, I I don't know what the nature of the project. It's not a new building. It's a small lot. Okay. I just haven't. Um, it just came in this morning, so mm -hmm. I haven't looked at it at all. 
Okay. Well, I guess. No, no, no. It's not a new building. Is what I'm saying. Oh, oh. So I think it's going to be some kind of facade modification. So I guess what I'm getting at is it's probably not going to be. A, it's not like reviewing the lumber yard or something like that. So you might still be able to get okay. through some review, and I'll have more edits hopefully by then. Anyway. So it would be good for us to do some homework and try to read through the edits so that we can just hopefully go through and approve everything as much as possible. Um, can I get a motion to close the meeting? So moved. All in favor. All set. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank, Thank you all. I enjoyed sitting here. What's brought that nasty weather? Yeah. <laughs>